Here in New York City, there is a uh, modeling agency. It's the Ford Agency, and they're conducting. I guess they do this every year. Do they do this every year, Paul? As far as I know, they've been doing it every Thank year. Thank you very David. much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's the uh, the search for the face of the 80s. Face of the 80s. Face of the 80s, yes, that's indeed. right. And uh, it turned out that Joan Collins had tried to enter the contest. She thought they were looking for the face of someone in their 80s. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know. You care, don't you? <laughs> uh, did you have a good weekend, Paul? I had a pretty nice weekend, yeah. What would you do? Oh, well, I, I participated in a benefit. You know, a lot of people say to me, why do you have to do the benefits? Why do you keep going? You know what I say, give a little bit back to the audience. But, yeah, I did a benefit and uh, yeah. thrilled to be here today. Yeah. How about you? How was I had, your weekend? I had a good weekend. I uh, do what I do every weekend. I jump in the car and spend the weekend rubbernecking. And... Uh... <laughs> Something's, something's terribly upsetting me, and I'll just, I'll take care of it right here. Now, you're, you watch baseball on TV, don't you? Oh, uh, every chance I get. <laughs> Sid, you watch, you watch, uh, now, do you, do you watch the TBS? Yeah, you see the Braves games? Okay, so over the weekend, I'm watching the Braves are playing a series with the Reds. The Atlanta Braves, the Cincinnati Reds. They have a pitcher there, the guy's name, Terry Forster. Do you know who Terry Forster is? Left-handed relief pitcher. The fattest man in all of professional sports. Am I right? The guy is a balloon. He must weigh 300 pounds. Yeah, at least. So now the guy's doing the ball game, Skip Carey and uh, Ernie Johnson and somebody else. Who else does it? John Sterling. Is that right, sir? Yeah. Thank you very much. They, n not once do they mention that this guy is enormous. <laughs> not, I mean, just, they pretend like the guy couldn't be in better shape. <laughs> he is a load. <laughs> just, just once, when they see this mammoth figure, this silo, get up in the bullpen, <laughs> I just want him to say, well, looks like Terry Forster is warming up. He's a left-hander, ERA about 3.5. What a fat tub of goo. <laughs> Whoa, my. Nobody says a thing. It's like, here comes Terry. He's this, <laughs> honest to God, he's this big. It ruined my weekend. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a kind of a bittersweet evening for us tonight. We're saying goodbye to an old, dear friend, uh, uh, our death. Okay. We have a uh, good show. You know who else is a fat ball player? And this, this is going to upset people, but you, you got to admit this is true. Rusty Staub. As this... Oh, all right, but take a look. The man in the offseason, it was his goal. I'm going to gain 80 pounds. And... <laughs> He's fat. Yeah, of course, he's, a, he's a Rusty the Gourmet Chef, but he's, <laughs> he's enormous, ladies and gentlemen. But this Terry Forster, Forster, if you get a chance, this might be worth, by the way, renting a bus driving to Atlanta to see a game. <laughs> oh, he's in the top condition of his career. Uh, now, what about this Phil Collins nonsense? Is he going to be on the show or not? Yes. He, he is going to be on. <laughs> we have a definitive answer on when that. When is he yes. going to be on now uh, with us? The 24th. 24th. All right, now we'll get to the bottom of this Sue Sue studio nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> which, he, which he insists on performing. He is going to do the show, uh, the song on the song, show? He will do Sue Sue's. He, he will not, not do. He will. He's only going to play drums now. Well, oh, we may need him. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you know some uh there's some personnel uh, circumstances in the band that are being ironed out among themselves later in kind of an ugly fight downstairs so he's not doing susu studio well i don't know he I'm came to his senses one. about the song is that correct all right uh what else mary hart uh, she's got to be stopped that's all i can say about that let's get her on can we have mary hart on this show and we'll find out why she's so damn perky all the time. <laughs> Anything from you, Paul? I'm just going over my notes here. Oh, uh, no, it's, no, I'm having a fine time. Uh, why, is your, why has your drummer evacuated the premises? He's... Well, I don't know. It's just the worst day of my life, but I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying the show, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how everything works out. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs>
<laughs> well, if, if this is the worst day of your life, then you and I have something in common tonight. You mean it's also the worst oh, yeah, day of your life? Been a, I got a letter here from uh, Jan Winner. Is it Jan or Jan? Jan Winner, yeah. I think in the old days it was probably Jan, wasn't it? Well, before the yeah. operation. No, it's Jan. No. <laughs> Now that's a that's a joke. You're just goofing around, it's aren't you? An old, you? old kind of yeah. shaky green kind. I got a, a nice letter, a letter from him today saying that I should have my teeth fixed. Uh, I thought that was nice. Uh, yeah. He was. Uh, up, why I had written would he him, say that? Well, I'd written him a letter a, about a week ago. I'd seen him in this movie, and I said, "Congratulations on your acting career, and, and think about doing some sit-ups." So he was. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you didn't mention that. Part. You know, as it turns out, the theme of my life is just fat people, isn't it? That's just... <laughs> not that he's fat. I don't mean that he's fat. But he maybe could do some sit-ups. <laughs> well, that was a, a funny letter. Okay, so, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't even made a dent in this thing yet, have we? The videotape is barely unwinding, and we're nowhere. <laughs> Yes, we're hopelessly lost, but making good time, aren't we? <laughs> okay, is it time for a clip or a commercial? Do we have anything to show at this point? I guess just bring out the first guest and see what the hell he can do. <laughs> you know what we ought to do is just get a, a scales out here. And the first order of business, myself, I'll come out, weigh in, and every guest would come out and weigh in. Weigh and we'll in. just find out who tends to be fat, who tends to be not fat. <laughs> no, I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. <laughs> the guests are growing impatient. I better, I better move on here. We'll get that Terry Forster on here one night. Uh, my first guest tonight is the star of his own uh, television program on another network. It's called Who's the Boss? A man of many talents and just about normal weight. Please welcome <laughs> Tony Danza. What is this? Oh, we're going to show you some fo uh, photos taken from around my hometown. Paul, do we have uh, music for these photos? Okay, these are photos taken around my little neighborhood. My... What is that? Well, I think it's my boy, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> as close oh, as I could get. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. That's, we'll take anything we can get tonight. Yeah, okay. okay, these photos taken from around my neighborhood. Well, take a look at this. This is... Uh, the local hospital is used to seeing Sharon Tracy, that's Sharon right there. They're used to seeing her hanging around the intensive care unit. Some girls go for athletes, others for musicians, explains the perky redhead, but I really dig sick guys. <laughs> oh. Uh, this is Mike Howell. He was the most popular attraction at the church fair this year. Uh, here's how this worked. You won a tape player if you could guess which of his eyeballs had been replaced by a Spanish olive. <laughs> okay. He, uh, here's another one you won't like. Um, here's one of those human interest stories you read about every once in a while. Well, it happened in our neighborhood last week. Retired barber Larry Wilkins, that's him on the left there, received a draft notice, even though he's 71 years old. And the town and everybody in the shop got a good laugh out of it. So uh, what happened? Larry then went to Fort Ord, where he died in a rifle range accident. <laughs> All they have to do is say when the guy is pitching, nothing major, just say, boy, is he fat. Uh -huh. They have these giveaways. Every night is covered dish night down there at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Everybody brings in something from home. And covered they, dish night. Yeah, they give it to Terry at the end yeah. of the game. <clears throat> it's in his contract. It's a, kind of an incentive for him. Um... Local entrepreneur Howard Mosley's uh, shown here with his latest money-making scheme. It's a mail-order build-a-pet kit. Here we see him working on the spaniel in a box. Could be the new desk, just hasn't been broken in yet. You know, the police found a big drug bust at the local high school. Uh, they announced a big drug bust there. Uh, this is undercover agent Mario Bellamino. Uh, the bust was so successful because Mario was able to pass himself off as a transfer student. <laughs> uh, I had the privilege to visit a specialized academy that uh, we're all quite proud of in the neighborhood. This is Miss Walker's School for Children with Really Weak Bladders. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Uh, you know, a little bit of Hollywood glamour has found its way to my neighborhood uh, a couple of weeks ago. A film went into production on the west side of town called Vets. It marks Loretta Swit's first movie project since M.A.S.H. Close friends of Miss Switz in the audience. Uh, and finally, Paul, finally. Yeah, I'm ready. Cover me. Uh, we have a new problem in our town. Jehovah's Elephants. <laughs> That's it. We're done. Uh, we'll be back after this. Doc Severance in the room. Festive mood today. That's good. Festive mood, because I understand it's not so much a show. It's a festival. It's a festival. <laughs> and uh, are you coming to the big softball game tomorrow? I'll be there. Are you coming? To, are you going to yeah, be there? I'll be there. You are going to be there. You heard it. That's on not what you said Fitness. earlier. Well, this, I haven't made it to one of those games yet, uh, but I'll be there tomorrow. I understand you're playing Good Morning America. We I mean, are playing... we. I mean, understand we're playing Good Morning America. That's right. Now, do you, what do you think the chances are of David Hartman showing up? Well, maybe... Not we... a chance in hell. <laughs> Guess not. We'll be playing the, uh, the folks at Good Morning America, and I hesitate to call them anything like weenies at this point, so I won't. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just see how the ball game progresses, and then Monday we'll talk about it. We have some heavy hitters on our We have, on our we have a fine team. You know, we demolished Good Morning... Or, uh, what is that show? Uh, Entertainment, Entertainment Tonight. Tonight. Yeah. yeah. Mary Hart wasn't at that away. one either. She wasn't there. You know what you she go to every doing. game, though. I've been... I think I missed one. I had a terrible broken bone in my leg. There you Couldn't go. Couldn't play. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, that'll be uh, Thursday... Uh, when? Tomorrow. When am I announcing it? Like, yeah, tickets are $7.50, $10, and, and the proceeds go somewhere we don't know. Um, we got a good show for you, folks, and uh, let's prove it here. Uh, Thursday, by the way, if you're just joining us, is the night that we uh, answer our viewer mail. Sure. We're going to talk with uh, Mr. Collins a little bit later. Also, Dennis Miller making his uh, television network or network television debut. He's a very funny stand-up comedian. And also, uh, Maria Conchita Alonzo will be joining us. But first of all, some unfinished business. Paul, last Thursday night on this program, you said that you would be playing softball with us on Friday evening. Yes, sir, I did commit to that. Yes. And you didn't show up. That is correct. Now, you know what sir. happened, Paul. We... <clears throat> But there we is an explanation. Well, is it valid? All right, let's get to the explanation in a second. All Let right. me just tell you what happened, and I'm not sure it was because you weren't there. Uh, we played Good Morning America, and the night before, Paul made some reference to them being weenies. Um, I may have said something like that. Yeah, all right, know. so... <laughs> So, now, now we, we got beaten by these guys. Now, let me tell you a couple of interesting things about this game. They told me in the middle of the game that last week they were beaten. Good Morning America was beaten by the CBS Morning News. Now, if you had to pick weenies, wouldn't it be CBS Morning News? They said they were beaten 115 to 3 <laughs> by the CBS Morning News. They beat us 24 to 2. The worst part, and I swear to God this is true, their right fielder was wearing a dress. <laughs> Let's take a look at one of the highlights from the big contest Friday night, the big softball game between our staff and Good Morning America. There wasn't much of a crowd, but then again, the game was, game was on cable, so. Now here comes the base runner. This is their right fielder wearing a dress. This is how seriously the woman was taking the game. Yeah, I'll play about eight innings and sponge off and go to dinner. <laughs> so, oh, of course, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, good Morning America was not there. The man who says Good Morning America, of course, was who knows where he was. But they, they were kind enough to send us a box of weenies, ladies and gentlemen. There they are. 
So that's what you missed, Paul. Well, I guess I learned my lesson about that whole weenies thing. Now, tomorrow, we have another big game. Are you going to be there tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, I'll be there. <laughs> oh, there. good. Then we can count yeah, on it. I was doing a little nutty favor, a show business favor for a kid named Billy Crystal. You know, and I was, we were in the studio, man. We're, you were in the studio. You were in the stew, stew, you know. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, congratulations to the, uh, the folks there at the Good Morning America, and uh, I'm certainly sorry for implying that you might be weenies. You are weenies, okay? We're, we're, we're the weenies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's introduce our first guest, if she's still here. We have no choice. The worst part, and I swear to God this is true, their right fielder was wearing a dress. <laughs> now, here comes the base runner. This is their right fielder wearing a dress. The fact is that our all-women's team could whip these wimps. Oh, of course, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, good Morning America was not there. The man who says Good Morning America, of course, was who knows where he was. But they, they were kind enough to send us a box of weenies, ladies and gentlemen. There they are. I have no choice but to call a wimp a wimp. And D.L. is the big wimp himself. Hey, wimps, you want to play us again? I'm certainly sorry for implying that you might be weenies. You are weenies, okay? <laughs> I can't wait until you guys take on the Today Show. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't got a chance. That's right. <laughs> now, I'm upset. There's a woman in the audience tonight from Atlanta. What's your name, ma'am? Susan. Susan, what is it? Cam. Cam, how do you spell your last name, Susan? C -A -M -P. C oh, Susan Camp. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard like a half a dozen syllables there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. It's, uh, it's Susan Camp. Right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so now, Susan, uh, just moments ago, she was uh, kind of laying on me about uh, making fun of Terry Forster, who is the relief pitcher from the Atlanta Braves, who is, uh, he's fat. <laughs> and, and you're upset by that as a representative from that great city in the Southeast. You know, it's the busiest airport in the Southeast is Atlanta. You're unhappy? The whole, the whole city's unhappy with me? No, 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 you've got this backwards, Susan. They should be, unha they should be unhappy with that balloon Terry Forster. <laughs> oh. Susan, I'm not the one who's enormous. <laughs> if, if I were the big fat guy, then they could be mad at me. But they should be mad at Terry, don't you think? Oh, no, he doesn't represent your city. You have many other wonderful representatives of your city. What about Ted Turner? Well, um, uh, what about Dale Murphy? Now, there's a man, a fine ball player, and you won't find an inch of fat on him. And I have a feeling you've looked. No, no, wait a minute. Hold it. Stop it here. Hold it. This could get ugly. Um... I had kind of a brief hallucination there. I... Apparently the lead count in our water is running a little higher than... <laughs> uh, now, are you really mad or are you just pretending you're mad? No, sit down. We're all, almost done. Here. Are you really mad or you, you... You're not really mad, are you? You really... Oh, brother. All right, we'll, we'll do something, a little something for you tonight to try and make it up to you. Okay? Okay. What, are, what else are we doing? And by the way, Bill, while you're out, call security. Um, oh, we got a good show. It's so good, I don't even need to tell you about it. Here's our uh, friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Hi, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I've been asked to read a list, David, of places where you're going to be this weekend. Uh, Friday, you're going to be at the Pine Knob. No, that's not really, <laughs> that's that's not right. really true. How oh, you know, you? Uh, but uh, we are going to be in, uh, in Evanston, Illinois, the first week in August, uh, Paul and I doing Brigadoon. So uh, <laughs> try, and, try and get those tickets as soon as you possibly can. And then uh, in uh, the last week in August, we'll be out in uh, Maine at the Playoffs by the Sea doing... Charlie's aunt. So, uh, Charlie's aunt. Yeah. I have here, ladies and gentlemen, an official NBC television release from the programming department. 
You can tell it's official because of the uh, corner has been ripped off. That's how they open the mail up there. <laughs> um, this is about Knight Rider. This will air June 30th. You may want to jot this down on your shoe. Kit, it says here, adopted by a car. Can you see that? Kit is the uh, talking uh, horse on the show, talking car. Kit adopted by a young boy. I'm sorry. What did I say? Kit adopted by a car. No, no. Kit, uh, Kit is the car. Yeah. He's adopted by a young boy. That's what it says right here. If you don't believe me, take a look. We're taking another important step tonight in the wrong direction. There it is. <laughs> Kit, adopted by young boy. After a serious accident in which Kit, the talking car, loses its memory circuits and Michael, David Hasselhoff, is temporarily dazed. Well, that's, that's just temporary? I thought that was the character. I, I thought that was the whole, the whole point of the show. Yeah, was it? No. He's always dazed. Uh, yeah. Now, the incredible car wanders off and is adopted by a young boy. That's right. Be a good excuse for somebody here in the city. I didn't steal the car. I adopted it. <laughs> it's a Pinto. I always wanted a Pinto. I adopted it. Uh, ironically, the boy, Doug Wainwright, is being sought by two thieves fleeing from the theft of high-tech explosives whose getaway vehicle caused the accident involving Kit and Michael. So on and so forth. So Kit is adopted by a young boy. That'll be June 30th. <laughs> I told you we'd make it up to you, ma'am. <laughs> we all need a vacation. All right. Uh, Susan was talking about uh, my uh, talking about uh, Terry Forster, and 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 uh, we've been thinking about it. And maybe I was hasty in calling the man fat and and uh, hinting that perhaps he wasn't in top flight condition for an athlete. But we did some research. Our staff did, and we found that there are other athletes who are quite successful as professionals in their field of endeavor who also are a little heavy. So sort of by way of apology to Atlanta and Terry Forster, we put together this little salute to some very successful athletes who also weigh just about as much as Terry does. Watch, watch the monitors there and we'll see what happens here. flight condition, isn't he? You see him every night out there at the ballpark. He must run an hour of wind sprints. Um, just a joke. Now, are you really steamed, ma'am? Will you stay for the rest of the show? Well, oh, we'll, we'll get something for you. Don't worry. She's awfully greedy, isn't she? What do you do for a living there in uh, Atlanta? And that, that's uh, another way of saying you're what? You're a housewife. Do you have how many children do you have? How many children do you have? I have two boys. How old are they? Spence. How old are they? Uh, three and seven. Three or seven. Okay, well that's good. And is your husband with you in town? No, he's not. I'm with a friend from Atlanta. Yeah, you don't need to explain that. <laughs> do, we, do we even have time for this now or what? Okay, we're done. My thanks to Gretchen Warden, Lily Tomlin, and Brian Denny. Good night, Susan. Have a nice trip back to Atlanta. Thank you very much. Good night, folks. Paul well, Schaefer, well, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Is, he do Is he doing it again? He, he did, did it again. again yeah, he, he did it again. I appreciate it, though, Bill. Anything you can do for me to get me a little bit of a more of applause, I'm thrilled about it. I'm glad you did it. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, you know, Paul, what I have here? Uh, the last couple of nights we've been talking about Terry Forster, and by the way, I think this is it for Terry. I think we're done talking about him. But uh, somebody was kind enough to send in a, uh, a, a baseball card featuring Terry Forster. Here, here's Terry right here. Now, if anybody has seen Terry recently playing... <laughs> They know that this photograph was taken when Terry was 12. <laughs> now, we have uh, interesting facts about Terry on the back here. 
Now, I've, I've been making fun because he seems to be a little larger than your average ball player. Uh, height is 6'3", weight 210. <laughs> yeah. uh, 210, he seriously must be close to 300 pounds. Anyway, uh, he throws left, bats left, and, and, and not doing, having a pretty good year, I understand. His ERA is not too bad. Uh, he was drafted by the White Sox, so on and so forth. Uh, let's see. Where is it? They had listings here. Favorite food. <laughs> now, this doesn't have it on there. It's what? On the bottom. Oh, yeah, here it is. Played, played basketball with Bill Walton and football with Brian Sipe in high school. His favorite food is Mexican food. <laughs> and plenty of it. Uh, among his favorite books are Rage of Angels. <laughs> and Centennial. Uh, Terry plans to travel the world. Well, those plans have been changed. He decided to eat the world, so... <laughs> this is so Thank you very much, Barbara. I appreciate the help. I said, I said, thank you very much. Uh, you're All right. <laughs> we have one of the Muppets interning on our staff here. <laughs> well, now, there's something you'll appreciate. We're in show business, and we're right in the thick of uh, show business feuds here. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to update them for you and let you know where we stand. And this, is, uh, this will be the last time I'm going to mention it. But let's just clear the air here. First, we have two kinds of feuds. We have the inactive feuds. Let's cover those first. The, uh, the first inactive feud we can talk about tonight, this one was with, I believe, Dustin Hoffman. I called him a weasel. Uh, we never heard back from Dustin Hoffman, so this one's in the inactive file. The second inactive feud, uh, Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight. I said she was too damn perky. We never heard from her. Okay. Those are the inactive feuds. Now, let's go to the active feuds, ladies and gentlemen. The most recent, uh, or the next of the most recent feud, this is the Terry Forster debacle. Uh, pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, I called Terry enormous. I called him a silo. And I called him a fat tub of goo. All right, now, then Terry called me. Terry called me. Here's what Terry called me. He called me. Here we go. A jackass. And... Johnny Carson's janitor, that's right. Now, right. now uh, Terry still owes us one, and then we'll update that one. Now, uh, the most recent uh, active feud going on is the David Hartman uh, Good Morning America softball feud. Uh, first of all, I called uh, Good Morning America, I called those people weenies. <laughs> then David Hartman called me a wimp, and then I called David Hartman a gutless weenie. <laughs> and, and then what happened? What it was next? Uh, after that, uh, oh, yeah, for some reason, uh, Peter Jennings decided to get in on this. None of his business. He called John Chancellor a four-eyed pinhead. <laughs> so to add uh, my two cents here, I would just like tonight mention that I think that Ted Koppels looks like Howdy Doody. So there, that's... getting uglier by the minute. All right, let's get right to it, ladies and gentlemen. It's Thursday night. This is the night we choose to answer our voluminous viewer mail. Let's get right to it. Letter number one. Letter number two. Howdy, Dave. The other night, my roommate and I were having dinner at Quincy's, a local steakhouse. A couple of guys at the table next to us asked if we were having the clam chowder. Is this a new pickup line or what, Dave? If anyone can help us out here, I know you can. Uh, your number one fan in Florida, Christine Clancy, Orlando, Florida. Uh, that's interesting, Christine. We did do some investigating into this, and we discovered that, yes, the clam chowder line is a very popular new pickup line. In fact, here are the five most popular pickup lines for the week of June 23rd through the 29th. Let's take a look at them here. Uh, of course, uh, the first one is, I sure like hospital food. My, what fleshy earlobes. There it is, three, having the clam chowder. Uh, four, hey, how about that Rambo? And five, I've got a bag full of weenies and a David Hartman mask. So... Uh, letter number three, a dear Dave. Finally, the big confrontation in sports today, Braves reliever Terry Forster and David Letterman. Remember what Letterman had said about Forster? The fattest man in all of professional sports. Am I right? The guy is a balloon. 
And so tonight, Forster took time out from dinner to appear on the show. And of course, he carried a snack with him and handed out some hot dogs. What is this, a little snack? What do you got there, Terry? Well, I was walking by my fifth deli of the day today. Uh -huh. <laughs> I looked in and I saw a David Letterman sandwich. Uh -huh, and you and went ahead. Yeah, it had a lot of tongue on it. Uh -huh. But you know... <laughs> And you can see the entire confrontation after the Tonight Show coming up on Late Night with David Letterman. Oh, Always dear. It looked vicious, Lynn, didn't it? Yeah. The man is fat, Lynn. <laughs> we'll have a look at tomorrow's weather when we come back. And Mary Savella looks at the great rock concert ticket sting. We'll be right back. Tonight, an NBC Sports exclusive. June 17, 1985, David Letterman opens his nightly show by calling Atlanta Braves pitcher Terry Forster the fattest man in professional sports, a balloon, and a fat tub of goo. June 22nd, the beefy relief specialist interrupts his pregame meal to call Letterman a big mouth and Johnny Carson's janitor. Mad as hell, Forster agrees to do the late night program on one condition. He gets to make chicken tacos. Sure, says Letterman, the floor has been reinforced, and so tonight, they meet for the first time ever. Coming up next, in stereo. I don't have anything to hide. Do you, do you smell Wait. Chinese food, by the way? I was smelling, I do smell some Chinese Why, is there a reason why we have Chinese food here? Terry oh, Terry Forster, of course. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's just... <laughs> I, I met him. <laughs> I met him earlier. He's a he's a very nice man, by the way. But uh, Terry is actually going to uh, cook uh, something for us tonight, and I guess that's what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Let them know so they can adjust the chair. My first guest tonight is a fine athlete. He is a relief pitcher with the Atlanta Braves. He has a record of one win, two losses, one save, and an earned run average of 1.82. Very good. He also claims to weigh 210 pounds, which we all know is a lie. Please welcome <laughs> Terry Forster. Thank you, Ray. Just put her right down there. Nice to see you, Terry. Oh, by the way, thanks, nice to meet thanks you. Thanks for being here. Have a or seat. Nice Let to me... eat you. Nice oh, to now, meet come you. On. Here, just sit down. There you go. There's All right. <laughs> what is this? A little snack? What do you got there, Terry? Well, I was walking by my fifth deli of the day today. Uh -huh. <laughs> I looked in and I saw a David Letterman sandwich. Uh -huh. And you and went had for it. it. Yeah, it had a lot of tongue on it. Uh -huh. But you know... <laughs> Now, uh, when, when this started, when the, the night that I said uh, I'd seen you playing over the weekend and I made reference to how large I thought you were on TV, now, now did that upset you? Did you get mad? Well, honestly, the last time I remember you was in L.A. in the mornings, okay? And I don't know what happened to that show. We won't get into <laughs> well, that. No, that's it. But... Right? but then they said, did you listen to David Letterman last night? Yeah. And I, honestly, I thought they were talking about somebody in the morning, Hartman. Mm -hmm. And oh, I the said... the guy in the Good Morning America, David yeah, Hartman. your yeah. buddy there. Yeah. And I said, well... <laughs> he's also mad at us. Uh, that's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. That's where I got all my material tonight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but anyway, they brought it in. They said, no, David Letterman. I said, David Letterman? I said, I thought he was canceled a few years back. Honestly, I didn't know he had a show. But since then... <laughs> No, but, but since then, you know, I, uh, I know you have a, one heck of a following. Uh, everywhere I go, people are talking about it. Uh, you knew I had a following, but didn't think I had a show. <laughs> so, okay, Just now... Just like me, I got a heck of a following here and there, and I ain't got a show. Yeah. Uh, but now, you, were you angry about it when you found out what was going on? Well, the first nine or ten times I saw it on tape, our coach Bobby Wine brought it in, I thought it was real funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then about the last 20 or 30 times I saw it, and everybody was talking about it, I said, well, I don't know how this is going to go over. But I came home that night, and, you know, I, I realized my wife says worse things about me. Yeah. Well, now, now I met your wife. She, seems, she also seems like a very nice woman. You know, she's in the back, but I wish that uh, she'd come out, you know, and at least show her face just to show people, you know, in the States, in the world, that 
Even fat people can get she's, beautiful she's girls. She's a very nice looking woman. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you know, the, the night I was talking about it, uh, and I was, it just started out as kind of a joke. And then I'm driving home, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, I just went on uh, network television, or, or at least NBC. Um, <laughs> and, and I called a man a fat tub of goo. And, and, and regardless of how funny or not funny a person might think that is, if you start thinking about it, that's not a real flattering thing to say. Well, the whole thing was this, David. You know, my first reaction after I'd seen it the first ten times is, man, that guy dogged me, and I'm going to go after him, and I'm going to sue him. Mm -hmm. Come in with and your then, spikes up. Yeah, and then after, you know, I took a shower and I looked at myself you in the gonna mirror. You were going to sue me? Yeah. I said, no, the guy's right. How can I sue him? <laughs> um. No. I like to say something, you know, I haven't always been this big. I would want everybody to know that. That's an interesting it point. Just, it just snacked up that. on me. Snacked up on you. Okay, Terry. Um, now, we have a, uh, a baseball card of yours. Here's Terry Forster right there. This is what, when you were with, with the White Sox? Yeah. Did you come up with the White Sox? Was yes, that your sir. first major league team? Yeah. All right. Nice looking young man. And this was, um, what is the year here? It's way back. Way 30s, back. 40s. <laughs> no, 1971. Okay. Okay, 1971, 14 years ago. 210. That's your weight when you're broke in. 210. All right. Now, here's, here's, a, here's your current card. <laughs> here's your current card right there, Atlanta Braves. By the way, the Braves are not doing as well as people had hoped for them this year, are they? No, we're, we're not. You're having a pretty good season, but the team's not doing that well. Okay, this is the current card. Weight, 210. It's amazing what a little money will do for you. <laughs> now, now, what do you weigh? Well, I weigh probably between your weight <laughs> and that, uh, what is it, Jumbo the Elephant on the uh, <laughs> Farm and Bailey Circus, and I think I'm probably closer to the elephant's weight right now. But, now, but uh, would it be safe to say that you're over 2 50. Watch it, I'm sitting close. <laughs> are, are you, do you weigh that much? Are you the biggest man in, in organized ball today? Well, you know what, David? It took me 33 years to get here, so I hope so. <laughs> but uh, I really couldn't tell you. I know there's some, even a couple on our team that are close, but... Uh, now, who's close on your team? I can't mention any names. They told me if I did, they'd never ever catch a ground ball for me again. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't need that aggravation. You know, I tell you who's I've noticed, and people out here are going to get upset, but it's true. The guy who's playing with the Mets has had a wonderful career, and a uh, Hall of Famer, Rusty Staub, is a little heavy. Yeah, but he can swing the bat. He can still swing, but he's, he's yeah. also a balloon. There's no getting around it. Well, he can be the balloon. I'll be the tub of goo. All right. Uh, all right, now, uh, Terry, Mr. Forster here is actually going to cook something for us. What are we going to make tonight, Terry? Uh, no, let me get this stuff out of my pocket. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I was going to be cooking While he's looking for the recipe, that. we'll be right back with Terry Forster. <laughs> Welcome back, Terry Forster. And I, are you going to actually make something here? Do yeah, you, I'm going to make some uh, beef tacos and chicken tacos do for you, you. Do you make these at home? Don't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, uh, let's just begin. You heat up some oil. Yeah. Well, the first thing you do, anybody that eats at my house, is they get, have to have a plenty of liquids in them. Because if mm -hmm. they don't, I don't know if it's my food doesn't taste that good or what. So here's how I started out. Plenty of liquids when you're dining with Terry Forster. Plenty of liquids. And the more you drink, the more you drink, the better it is. The better it gets, it. yes, yeah. sir. Okay, now here's how we're going to start it. I want to make sure the grease is hot, so stand back a little bit. Perfect. Oh, right. very nice touch. I like how you All did right. that. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go for the tomatoes. Boy, these, these look like vine-ripened tomatoes, too, don't they? They're great. <laughs> yes, sir. They look sir. good. I'll tell you, you hold it and I'll cut. No, Terry, you go no. ahead. <laughs> All right, just like this. I want to say something that my cooking at home, since I've been cooking at home, I should say is that my dog is quick begging at the table. <laughs> okay, just like this. Now, do you ever uh, eat anything in a bullpen? Um, we're not supposed to, but, I mean, like, this right here wouldn't even be a snack for us guys in the bullpen. Is that right? Not even a snack. Now, how does, how does that work? Do you bring it with you to the park, or do you actually eat the stuff in the ballpark? Well, what we do is we get somebody coming to us. You know, like somebody wants a uh, baseball autograph ball, and we say, hey, you have the ball and five bucks, go get us four hot dogs. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
So, <laughs> All right. so you lure some kid to the bullpen. Not always young kids either, David. Just just guys. <laughs> Men and women, they'll come and they'll get you ball, uh, go to the and get you hot dogs. Yeah, primarily that's it. Uh, very rarely we will have any beer down there. Because a lot of times in the bullpens, in the bullpens, they don't sell uh, alcoholic beverage, beverages out there. Just but you, you have had beer in the bullpen. Have you ever been sipping on a, like a large tub of beer and, and had to go in? Uh, not necessarily, no. I know when I'm going to pitch, uh -huh. and that's never now. But... <laughs> so you got your uh, time Ouch. free there. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, like when you throw one time in 19 games, Yeah. but the team's been winning. Okay, where did okay, Now, do you want to try this? Just slice it like that. Now, watch it. This knife is really, no, no, really I don't, sharp. I'm not, I'm not so much concerned with slicing tomatoes. I think we've all sliced tomatoes. Are you we, sure? We want to see not you make the, the tacos. Way. Okay, here we go. Now, the, these are sliced. Where are the tacos at? Here they are. Tortillas, these are, corn tortillas, flour tortillas. These are flour tortillas, tortillas right flour here. Tortillas. Now, you can have them hard or you can have them soft. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer? Hard. Good. All right. And we're on our way. <laughs> Okay. Now Which stand ballpark back. has the best food? Well, see, I've been on the disabled list so much. That's probably one reason why I ballooned up. I like uh, Houston. Houston, why? Because uh, they have big tubs of beer for a buck seventy-five. Mets is outstanding. Yeah. What do Mets, you have out of Chase Stadium? Oh, well, I've been pitching out there sometimes where I won't even go in the clubhouse. I'll go right behind home plate and get the basket of Robin's ice cream. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, they know. I tell you, they know me at all the concession stands throughout the league. Now stand back, because this might stand spit back. at you. Yeah, it might spit. I won't spit at no, you, but of this might. Not. Okay. I just count. Oh four, yeah, that oil is blazing five. hot. And here we go. <laughs> Do it again. What are we doing? Count Counting. To, go count to four or five. One, two, three, four. Five. You got it. Okay, there now. You go. All right. We're going to stick it. Put, it. put it back in the pack with the others. <laughs> uh, this one's yours. It's... <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to put it down and just get the grease off for yeah, you. Yeah. I like more grease, the better it is for you. But... <laughs> Me and my daughter, Andy, that's how we are. How old's your daughter? Well, I have three of them. Mm -hmm. Kimmy's 11, Andy's 10, and Whitney's 11 months. Do, do they ever mention that maybe you could drop a couple of pounds? Or... Well, the only thing they mention is, you know, is my cooking, believe it or not. Yeah, they like the cooking. Uh, they miss it. The more they miss it, the better they like it. Okay. All right, there how are we, we doing here on time? One minute, okay, so okay, you, you fold them go. over. Fold them over, just yep. like this. Now you put any kind of ingredients you would like in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. But you haven't, you haven't cooked the beef yet. Oh, it's already cooked. Oh, okay. We cheated. All right. What well, do you like, beef or chicken? Well, I like uh, chicken. <laughs> I kind of guessed that. Here we go. All right, now here we go. I'm going to use my hands since I just washed them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday. All right, tomatoes, you like tomatoes? Yeah, I love tomatoes. All right. Well, look at this. I mean, I think you could do this, David. Yeah, I Onions? might be able to. Uh, yeah, I love onions, sure. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Now, now load up some sauce on there. I will, I will. All right, now will you supply people the recipe if they write in for this job? I, a matter of fact, I'll, I'll even make it for him. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, now, a lot of hot sauce. Right, put some hot sauce on there. All right. All right. A lot of hot sauce. Okay. All right. Now, there's the uh, beverage. Now, like I said, the more you drink, right. the better you're going to like it. Bill, see if this woman will come down here and taste this. Right there in the <laughs> Right over here. Oh, don't back over. Hi, how are you? I can't. I'm a vegetarian. You're a vegetarian. Oh, well, we can do food. that, too. Here we go. Well, make her up a vegetarian. All right, here we Give go. me somebody else who doesn't mind eating a little chicken there. Uh, what's your name? Molly. Molly, where Molly? are you from? California. Uh, what part of California? Uh, most recently, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. You know, Terry used to fish for the... Uh, oh, sweetheart. Hi, what is your name? Kathy. Kathy? Yeah. Terry Forster. How are you, honey? Bill. Remember this. Bigger is better. All right, really is right. So he's going to get you a vegetarian taco, and then uh, what is are we it, doing? Onions, is that a vegetable? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, How now. are we doing? Is that about it here? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Let, at least one hot sauce? Lots? Here, why don't you go ahead and try um, this other yeah, one? Yeah, you try that one. A little bit. That's a little. Great, perfect. Would you like some rubber gloves? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Boy, this is a handsome-looking taco here, Terry. This is, this is, look, at, look at this vegetarian job Terry has cooked up. Mm, boy, oh, boy. That's, well, you know, that's for her. She looks thin. If it was me, I'd be having All right, the whole I'm thing. I'm sorry, but that's it, and he's making them. So, well, good luck to you. Nice meeting you.
You too. <laughs> <laughs> nice meeting you also. Did you eat that? How is it? How was right? it? Terry, thank you very much. All right. Uh, have a nice season and come back anytime, sir. Okay. Terry Forster, ladies and gentlemen. Get to Grenada, you know they're not they're not there. But who would be at the White House today? There's got to be somebody Nobody. there. Nobody. I mean, you know. Like Nobody. It's, 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 it's <laughs> empty. Let's President. Uh, no, we can't call Grenada. We got have... all these good questions here. No, we GMA Hartman stuff. is he a weenie? <laughs> why That's not the Today Show? Yeah. Now you're working for for ABC. Why aren't you working for the Today Show? <laughs>